Hey guys, uh, in this video, I'm going to be comparing four Python libraries for geospatial visualization. As you may know, there are a ton of libraries available, uh, but for the sake of this video, I'll be focusing on Folium, LeafMap, PyDeck, and KeplerGL. All right, so first things first, let's look at how to initially set up a blank map for each library. So for Folium, you need to create a map object with the uh, method, and you'll be able to set a bunch of parameters, uh, such as the initial coordinates uh, and the zoom level. To display it in a streamlit app, there is actually no uh, native streamlit function to do so, but you can use the folium static function from the streamlit folium library uh, to do so. And you have uh, this map right here. So natively, as you can see, uh, the folio map is set on OpenStreetMap, and there are no actual interactive elements to it apart from the zoom control here. As for leaf map, uh, I'm actually using here the folio map module uh, that is built in onto folio. The map setup is very similar to uh, folio, as you can see. And to display it in streamlit, you use the to streamlit method. And you get this map here. Again, we see uh, the OpenStreetMap uh, base layer here. But the cool thing about LeafMap is it natively puts a bunch of map controls for you to use, such as the full screen. Uh, you have the uh, layer control here. Uh, you have also a bunch of polygon selection. So these are the kind of map controls that it natively uh, puts when you display the map. Now, uh, looking at PyDeck, uh, the map parameters are set up using a view state object, like so here, uh, and uh, you wrap this object in a deck object. So uh, Streamlit has a native function called PyDeck chart to actually display this map uh, within your Streamlit app. So natively, the map uh, is displayed on a map box uh, base layer, as you can see here. So finally, as for KeplerGL, uh, it's a bit more fancy as you have to build a JSON object containing uh, all your map configs, like you can see here. You then put all of this uh, config within a KeplerGL object. Uh, like Folium, you can use the Streamlit Kepler uh, library uh, to display the map in Streamlit. One very cool thing about KeplerGL is that it natively offers a wide range of map controls without you having to actually set them up uh, in the code. So as you can see here, you could actually do a dual map here. You could do a 3D map, have uh, hit show legend. Uh, this is the kind of thing that you have uh, natively here. You also have a sidebar that displays the layers. You can actually filter your data, your polygons, your geometries. You can put interaction with the tooltip. You can actually add a geocoder. So this is the kind of thing that uh, natively Kepler supports or uh, displays on your map without actually having uh, to code the controls. Next, we have the map tiles. Uh, so in Folium, you only have to set the, the name of your base map like so here. So for instance, if you wanted to have the Carto database dark matter, you would uh, configure it this way, like so, or the open topo map, like so here. You can also create your custom base map through the tile layer uh, method. So here we're uh, actually using the Esri world imagery to have this base map here. As for a uh, leaf map, it's basically the same thing. You insert the tile map, uh, the name of your tile map here. Uh, so for instance, you have the Carto database Positron, the uh, Google Roadmap, or a custom tile layer uh, through this function here. Again, we have the Esri world imagery. As for PyDeck, uh, it is uh, configured through the deck object with the map provider and map style. Again, some examples, you would have the Carto Positron with the light map style or the map box dark version. And again, you can also create your custom layer through creating a tile layer like so here. Now, as for Kepler, there would be ways to actually configure uh, some base maps or custom base maps. But the cool thing about Kepler is 
like I said earlier, there are uh, a bunch of map controls that you can uh, leverage. So for instance here, uh, you could actually go through the base map configuration and actually change within the widget your base map. So here I have the light version uh, of the map box, base map, uh, muted light. So you have some choices of base map. You can also have the satellite. So this is the kind of uh, base map that you can uh, actually configure directly within the widget. Now, uh, in this section, I'm going to be using these two uh, geometries, uh, one being a set of two points and another one being a single polygon. So to add a layer in volume, uh, you only have to wrap your geodata frame into a uh, geojson method here. So when you do that, uh, it displays the two geometries. It is pretty much the same logic with uh, leaf map, where we can also specify the layer names here uh, to actually be able to select the layers. So uh, if I display it here, you can uh, see the same geometries, but you can also select them here with the layer control. So if I'll select points, the, the points are hiding. As for PyDeck, you got to create a list of layers of each layer that you have and input them into a deck object. So when you do so, uh, again, it creates a map with these two geometries. As for capital GL, again, same logic. You have to use the add data method and you can uh, also name these uh, polygons. So when you do that, it displays these two polygons. Again, one cool thing with this uh, Kepler GL library is you can actually interact uh, with these two geometries. You can actually hide them. We can uh, You can also configure some options for these geometries. So if you want to have uh, a different color, so let's say I have, want to have uh, yellow points, uh, you can do so. So there are a bunch of configuration that you can set up with the Kepler GL library. Next, uh, I wanted to address the interactive elements for of each library. Uh, as I showed uh, since the beginning, uh, Leaf Map and Kepler GL are filled with uh, map controls uh, natively. As for Folium, actually, uh, it supports uh, the inclusion of a wide range of map controls through the uh, plugins. Uh, module. So for instance, here uh, I added the full screen control, the measure control, mouse position, a search control, and a minimap. So when you add these plugins, it actually looks like this. So again, you have the search control, some controls here, the layer control. So the minimap here, uh, if I zoom in, it also zooms in in the minimap. In the bottom right corner, you have the coordinates of the mouse. You can also uh, use the search bar here. So if I wanted to uh, select the uh, B point, uh, I can do so here and it uh, zooms in on the selected point. So this is the kind of plugins that you can add to the map to have uh, controls. As for PyDeck, actually it lacks a lot of map controls. You cannot really define any map controls whatsoever. So that's where PyDeck may be uh, lacks in uh, customization. Now, talking about the ability to create color breadth maps, uh, all four libraries have this feature. For this section, I'm using this geodata frame object uh, containing a bunch of geometries in the region of San Francisco with a random metric here uh, associated with each of these geometries. So, uh, Folium and Leaf Map uh, are pretty straightforward. You define the geodata frame here into uh, both of these methods. You define the metric on which the color scale is going to be based on, and you define the geo IDs. So for uh, in this case, I'm using the fill color uh, yellow to green, same with leaf map here. So when you do that, it displays the chloropleth map based on the metric. PyDeck is a bit more complex uh, as it doesn't have a chloropleth layer natively, you first have to define a color scale on your own based on the metric and input uh, this color scale into the get fill color parameter. When you do that, it displays the global. As for Kepler GL, you don't have to configure it uh, in the code. You can actually go with the controls directly. So if you go to the, your polygon here, uh, you go to fill color and you can select a field. So in this case, we're going to select the metric field. All right, so here, and then it displays a chloropleth map. Next, we're going to dive in into heat maps. Uh, so for this section, I'm using a set of points, uh, again, in the San Francisco area. Uh, and for all these points, I have a weight metric. 
So for Folium, uh, you can use the heat map plugin, but first you gotta transform your uh, GeoData frame into a, an array where the first two items are the latitude and the third item is the weight. So you would get something like this. Again, you would have the latitude, longitude, and the weight for all of your points. And when you display it, you get something like this which is the heat map uh, based on the weights. We've got a, a very similar logic for leaf map, but we can directly input the geodata frame into the function here, add heat map, and we're specifying the lat long and the uh, weight value. And we get uh, something very similar to uh, folium. As for PyDeck, there is a layer called heat map layer that you can use. And we simply define again, the coordinates and the uh, weight of the, the values and when you display it it looks like this personally i kind of prefer these kind of uh, heat maps there may be uh, some customization that would be uh, needed to the other ones to have uh, this kind of uh, heat maps as for kepler gl uh, natively it doesn't have a heat map function however you can use the layer controls or layer parameters to actually create a heat map so if you go uh, into the layers tab you go to your point uh, layer so natively it creates a point type layer uh, but we're going to change it to a heat map so you just go down and you have heat map here now we're going to make sure that the weight metric is the right one so let's just go down to the weight metric and then we have our heat map last item i wanted to talk about is the exporting aspect so all four libraries i've been talking about today have uh, a way to export the map into an html file that you can open uh, in your browser so as you can see here every library has a function for that so for instance here i have imported the html file from the leaf map object and when clicking on it it opens up the uh the leaf map map into the browser so yeah that concludes the comparison i wanted to do uh, today for these four common uh, geospatial libraries. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye, guys.